I'm here with my friend and hermano Eduardo Verastegui, executive producer of Sound of Freedom and a star of many films. In this film, Sound of Freedom, it's amazing. You got to go see it. Everyone needs to see this film. It's a smash success. There's about a million people that are subscribed to this podcast. So if two of you can all get out there, we can get two million more. I don't know what that is in the box office, Eduardo. 10 million, 20 million more. Get out there and do it because this film is, I think, honestly, going to change the world. Jim Caviezel has a, a little spot at the end talking about how this form of art is what changes souls, changes minds, and changes the world. Eduardo Verastegui, you're the executive producer. Congratulations on it. What are the numbers now? Hermano, uh, hermano del alma. Uh, well, first of all, thank you. Thank you so much for what you do. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your friendship, brotherhood, and thank you for this opportunity that you're giving me uh, to be in your show one more time. I think this is the third time, right? I mean, we did one interview and then we prayed the rosary, and now, yeah. now we're talking about Sound of Freedom. Yes, Man, I, I'm living Taylor, and I'm living the American dream. I'm living a, a beautiful miracle. I never imagined, never, never imagined, after eight years of work, uh, for two hours of your time, which is what the movie lasts, that uh, on July 4th, Independence Day of the United States, a day where all Americans celebrate freedom, we will be celebrating in a different way with Sound of Freedom, with a movie that is designed to raise awareness about this evil that is happening in the world, child trafficking. It's a global problem, especially between U.S. and Mexico. U.S. is the number one consumer of child sex in the world. Mexico is the number one provider. When the good people of Mexico and the good people of America meet, sound of freedom happens. When the bad people of Mexico and the bad people of the United States meet, child trafficking happens. So I am so grateful that we were competing, brother, with the biggest company in the world, Disney, Angel Studios, the smallest company in America. Indiana Jones, hundreds of millions of dollars was the budget for the production and for their publicity. We, the underdog, the little one, but with a lot of heart and a lot of soul, never imagined that on July 4th, we became the number one movie in America. This is the American dream and this is the Mexican dream together, working together. I'm so grateful to God, all glory to God, and especially I'm so thankful for so many people, millions of people praying, praying for this movie, because this is not just a movie, Taylor. This is a movement, movie to movement. Movies can move hearts. Movies can move souls. Movies can change the world. Art has the power to change people's lives forever, for good or for bad, how you use it. So I commit, I committed 20 years ago to only work in projects that will have the potential not only to entertain, but hopefully to make, it, to make a difference in people's lives. And Sound of Freedom is saving lives. It's a movement. More than 5 million people show up in theaters. Can you believe it? This is amazing. This is the people's movie. This is not the establishment mafia Hollywood movie. This is the people's movie. And the people are tired. When they see the movie, they say, enough is enough. God's children are not for sale. And they ask the same question I asked myself eight years ago when I met Tim Ballard. What can I do to end child trafficking? And the movie begins for them when the movie finished. And this is a movement that is growing and no one can stop it, brother. It's too late. They can take me, they can take Gene Caviezel, they can take Tim Ballard, millions of people. They cannot take them. We're, we're, we're too many. This is, this is bigger than what we thought. The movement is growing and growing and no one can stop it. Yeah, you're right. I mean. Everyone that I've known has seen it, loves it, raves about it, is encouraging people to see it. But there are naysayers. I've been watching this. I'm sure you're aware of it. This is QAnon. Mm -hmm. This is right wing men. This <laughs> is, what do you say to anyone out there who has heard these falsities, these rumors about this film and these stories? What do you say to them? No, well, first of all, <laughs> this is ridiculous. This is ridiculous, man. I mean, these guys are lying. They're, they're professional liars. That's that's who they are. You know, I'm just you know, I'm not judging. I'm just reporting. You know, this this is who they are. 
And you know what? They should apologize to the kids who were rescued. This is a true story, brother. They should apologize to all these kids who were rescued and to all the people who rescued their lives to rescue them. It's amazing how the same people who are like um, trying to destroy this movie and the message is the same people who like eight years ago, they cover that same rescue that took place in Cartagena, Colombia. And they were praising Tim Ballard. They were saying like, what, Rolling Stone? All these guys, they were praising him. Like, this is real. An American hero went to Cartagena, Colombia. They, they covered the same uh, rescue mission that we are telling in the movie. Eight years later, nine years later, what, what changed? It's the same story. The culture changed. Mm -hmm. The culture changed. Can you imagine? I mean, in, 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 in one second, everything changed. This is real. This is a global problem. In Mexico, every day, more than 57 children disappear. Every 20 minutes, one more, and then another one, another one, and another one. 21,000 every year. This is the official numbers. I think there's a lot more, you know? So I, I don't want to wait, hermano, until this tragedy happens to me for me to wake up. When I met Tim Ballard in Los Angeles, California, eight years ago, and when he told me in details what these children are going through, when he told me what he does with his team, ex-Navy SEALs and ex-FBI agents, ex-CIA agents, they travel around the world undercover rescuing children that are kidnapped for sexual exploitation. These kids are being abused, sexually abused, 10 to 15 times a day for many years, for many years, until they don't want them anymore because they're, you know, they're not fresh meat anymore. That's the vocabulary that they use. So mm. they, they, they go to the second business. They open them and they sell their organs. When you hear this information, brother, you cannot look the other way around because evil triumphs, evil triumphs when good people remain silent. And when good people remain silent, they're not good people anymore. They're part of the problem. So our goal, brother, in order to eradicate child trafficking, the number one step is to raise awareness. That's my goal as a filmmaker. So of course, I couldn't look the other way around. I couldn't remain silent. And I remember like yesterday when Tim Ballard looked at me and he said, Eduardo, Alejandro Monteverde, my business partner, the director of the film, a genius, Picasso, Michelangelo, this guy is, is the best director, in my opinion, in the world right now. And he did Bella, who saved many, many lives from abortion. He directed Little Boy, and now he directed Sound of Freedom. Anyway, so when Tim looked at us and he said, I know it's very sad what I'm telling you guys. But you know what, man? It's more sad now that you know. It's more sad now that you know it if you do nothing. If you do nothing, what are you going to do? And we knew at that moment that a new mission was about to give birth. A new mission was coming to us. So we put pause in everything that we were doing, in everything that we were doing, so we can dedicate our 100% of our lives to build this project and to help Tim Ballard and the rest of the people who are not afraid to be the voice of those who doesn't have a voice, those who cannot defend themselves, the children who are right now, who are in the hands of these perverts, you know? We're talking about that there's more slavery today, more slavery today than when slavery was legal. And people, they don't know that this is happening. They think that this is too far from them. You know, this is like in maybe in other countries, like in Bangladesh. No, it's happening right here, next door, everywhere. And it's growing and it's growing in every sector, political sector, religious sector, um, everywhere in, in, in the families. Violencia sexual domestica, domestic sexual violence is happening right there. It's everywhere because of pornography, child pornography. People are getting addicted to it. And then they're, they're buying kids right now, right now. Every 30 seconds, a child disappears in the world. Every 30 seconds, brother. And what? What are we going to do? Like, look the other way around? No. Close your eyes for a sec. Close, close, your eye, close your eyes for a second. Cierra los ojos un segundo. Just think about this. What if this is my son? What would I do? I will stop everything that I'm doing and I will hope and pray that the entire world will stop everything they're doing so they can help me to find my son. That's my motivation. That's why I wake up every day because I don't want this tragedy to happen to me for me to wake up. And I don't want any other parents go through this nightmare, brother, because this is the worst thing, the worst thing that can happen to a child. We have to do something. We are doing something. The good news, the movement started.
And again, no one can stop it. This is just the beginning. We're millions of millions of people. So whoever is trying to block this message, first of all, they're helping us. Because I met someone yesterday and he said, Eduardo, you know, I heard about your movie. I was too busy. I was not going to, you know, I didn't have time to see it until I read the article in the uh, Guardian, Rolling Stone, and a few others. And after I read what they said, don't go and see this movie. This movie is for like, what, I don't want to repeat what they said, you know. I said, I'm, I want to see this movie. So somehow God is using them too. So thank you for, for helping us because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what I say. The numbers and the results is what matters. And the movie right now, more than 5 million people are showing up in theaters. And you know what they do when they leave the theater? They videotape themselves. They give us a review. A, re a review comes from their heart. Their heart are their heart are speaking. And when what comes from the heart touch the hearts, they are, are they are the posters. They are the billboards. Yeah. They're the people who are helping this movie to grow and to grow and to grow. We're we were number one in Puerto Rico against Mission Impossible. Can you imagine? I mean, this is <laughs> I'm living a dream, brother. Again, the American dream and the Mexican dream together. This is amazing. God is amazing. All glory to God. To be, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm just like you. We're broken instruments. But when you say, God, use me, he use you. Yeah. You know, Eduardo, I remember in 2022, about nine months ago, you and I were smoking a couple cigars out by a pool. And you were talking about this film. I knew what it was about. I knew Jim Caviezel. I hadn't seen it yet. And I remember at one point you just let, let out a big sigh like a... Like, I don't know if anyone, if we're ever going to get this film out. Something you said, something like that. And I could tell at that mm -hmm. time you were maybe frustrated or discouraged. What happened between that night, you and I smoking cigars by a pool to 4th of July, number one. I mean, so much has happened since that moment. Walk us through it and your role as executive producer. What, what happened since then? Well, um, so many obstacles, man. So many obstacles from day one, from day one. Yeah. After I met Tim Mallard with Alejandro Monteverde, the writer and the director of this film. Who um, did a great job. I, I remember Tim say. Ballard. Great oh, job. Man, Alejandro, he's amazing. Uh, yeah. You know, I always say this guy is a genius and the best part is he doesn't know it. So he keep him humble, you know, mm -hmm. and, and Gene Caviezel as well. And I mean, I knew that I had an amazing story when I met Tim Ballard. Okay, this is a real story. This is a real hero. Amazing. I'm inspired by meeting a true American hero. Okay. Then I have an amazing filmmaker, Alejandro Monteverde, great writer, great director. Amazing. But before we commit to do this movie, Tim Ballard looked at us and he said, okay, guys, I need to be very honest with you because I don't want, you know, like later on that you, you come to me, Tim, you, you didn't tell me how dangerous this is, right? So Eduardo and Alejandro, I have a lot of friends. We have a lot of friends. Amazing friends. But we have a lot of enemies too. Big enemies. And those enemies will be yours. Are you sure you want to commit to do this? And that's when I closed my eyes and I did the exercise that I shared with you. What if this is my son? What if this is my daughter? Mm -hmm. What would I do? I welcome your enemies. Your enemies are mine now. We shake hands and we started the project. When I started raising funds for this movie, brother, in the beginning was the hardest thing I ever done in my life. Mm. Everybody was saying, no, this is too dangerous. This is too dangerous. Yes, it's too dangerous. Yes, it's too dangerous. But it's more dangerous not to do it in the long term. What if this is your son? Will you say it's too dangerous to find my son? No, you will give your life to find your son, right? Man, God's children are not for sale. They're our little brothers and sisters. We're going to die one day anyway. We're going to answer to God. If it, this information that, that I didn't know that existed, if it was revealed to me and to Alejandro, it's for a reason. It's not for me just to look the other way around. You know, it's happening right now. I have to do something. So finally, you know, I, I found the right people and they started, they started, you know, they started helping us. And when the script was ready, second challenge, more than 20 actors, brother, passed. More than 20 actors. Like, no, this is not uh, for me, this material, you know, well, my client didn't respond to the material, whatever, you know, until finally I went to see uh, Tim Ballard. I said, brother, nobody wants to do this film. And the script is amazing. I don't understand. Who do you want to play you? And he said, wow, man, like, like my ideal, my dream. Yes. Who, who is your dream actor for this movie? And he said, well, 
Jesus Christ. Brother, that, that's too expensive. I cannot afford that. <laughs> and he started laughing. He started laughing and he said, no, 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 brother, I'm, I'm, I'm joking. Of course, I'm not talking about God. I'm talking about uh, the actor who played Jesus Christ in the Mel Gibson's movie, The Passion of Christ. Oh, Jim Caviezel, but he doesn't look like you. He's older than you. And it doesn't matter, he said. It doesn't matter. Not only he's an amazing actor, Eduardo, I'm looking for a godly man, a true ambassador of freedom. Mm -hmm. And he has what it takes. He's brave. Please get him if you know him. I, I knew him. I sent him a text message. I was with Alejandro Monteverde. And I say, hey, Jim, how are you, my friend? I haven't seen you in a while. I hope you're doing great. Um, I have an amazing project. I'm here with Alejandro Monteverde, and I would love to uh, meet with you one day, one day so I can share with you the story. And I thought he was going to answer, you know, the typical Hollywood actor answer, you know, just call my manager, here's my agent's number, you know, send him the script, send him the offer, and then nothing happened. You know, we're independent filmmakers, we're outsiders, we're always against the current, right? So everything is more, more, more difficult. He answered right away, hey, let's meet, in, let's meet in a couple hours in this coffee today. Okay, well, amazing. Wow. So I go with him, I, I bring Alejandro Monteverde, we pitch the story to him, and he starts crying right there. He said, guys, this is, I've been praying for a project like this. He said, yes, right there. But then the next day he calls me. I read the script. I love it. One challenge. One challenge. My wife uh, is not comfortable uh, me going to Colombia. She thinks it's too dangerous. So um, do you think we can film this somewhere else? He said, Jim, I mean, the story happens, I mean, takes place there. And everything is ready to go there. I mean, this is this is a global problem, of course. It's happening here. It's happening everywhere. But this is the first rescue mission that took place in Cartagena, Colombia. And it's a very important story. It's a powerful. I mean, you know the story, but it needs to be there. Uh, but OK, well, let, let me let me ask Tim Ballard, and then I'll call you right back. So I called Tim Ballard, and I said, brother, I have a good news and a bad news. The good news is he's in. The bad news is his wife, I think, maybe she saw Narcos Colombia on Netflix. And, and by the way, these these TV series they do a lot of damage to our con to our country, brother. Colombia, me Colombia is an amazing country. It's a wonderful country. Mexico is a wonderful country, and I'm tired to see these guys going to our countries and putting their cameras in the in the bad stories. Yes, we have bad stories, but we have good stories too. The majority of our people are amazing. Our countries are amazing. How come they don't put the camera in stories that are designed to inspire the audience. No, they always do the wrong thing. And of course, uh, people around the world, they, they think that our countries are what they see in these TV series, in these films, in these soap operas, right? Anyway, so, and, and, and I see the consequences right here. This amazing actor who's my brother, his wife is not uh, comfortable uh, for him to go to Colombia. So I called him, I said, well, good news he's seeing the bad news. You know, he doesn't wanna go there because of his wife. What, what should we do? And Tim said, well, tell them that if uh, uh, tell them that if 30 ex Navy SEALs will be enough uh, to protect him. Um, OK, I passed the message. Uh, Jim, um, can you please tell your wife that Tim Ballard said that he's willing to bring 30 ex Navy SEALs to protect you? Is that OK? Green light. Problem resolved. We're in Colombia filming, brother. It's amazing, amazing. You know, we're having the best time. But then three, four days later, as a producer, of the film, I know who is on set. So we had we had like 200 people on set, actors, extras, people from the production, and half of these guys are not there. And I'm like, oh my gosh, what are these guys? I don't want to say anything to uh, Gene Caviezel because I don't want to skirt him. And uh, what are these guys? The next day, same thing. The next day, three, four weeks, nothing. Next thing you know, I'm reading this local newspaper from Colombia that it says that uh, the uh, federal police arrested uh, some traffickers and rescued more than 200 children who were kidnapped for sexual exploitation in Cartagena, Colombia, for the tourists who are looking for, you know, to have sex with children. And, and more details. And I'm like, oh my, what, what is this? So I run to see Tim Ballard and I said, brother, look, it's very similar, this article to the movie that we're filming. Isn't that amazing? It's, it's still happening. And he smiled and he said, that was us. What? what? Yeah, half of the guys who were not on set, one day they were walking in Cartagena, Colombia, and some people approached him. Hey, amigos, gringos, how are you? What's up? You want senoritas, young senoritas, young girls? And they didn't know that these guys were experts in, you know, professionals, experts in rescuing children. 
So they follow up, you know, yeah, yeah, we want, okay, you have young girls because we have more Americans coming tomorrow. Oh, really? So these guys, with the help of the amazing, amazing uh, federal police from Colombia, uh, together, they arrested this, uh, arrested the traffickers and rescued more than 200 children. Can you imagine how that works, brother? And, and they during gave all the, the credit film. to the Colombia government during, during the film. The fil and during they the gave, filming. They, yes, during the filming. But why? Because Jim Caviezel's wife say no in the beginning. Yes. I thought that was a bad news. That was the best news ever because that no inspired Tim Ballard to say, well, what if, he, what if we bring 30 ex Navy SEALs to protect him? And because of those 30 ex Navy SEALs, half of them, they were able, with the help of the Colombia government, to rescue more than 200 children. And, and they gave all the credit to the Colombia government because they needed to stay there uh, uh, you know, as an undercover uh, agent protecting Jim, uh, Jim Caviezel. And we need to stay there for three, four more weeks filming. Unbelievable. You have to understand one thing, Taylor. As a filmmaker, we were hoping in the future, when the film is finished, when the film comes out in theaters one day, hopefully, hopefully, by the grace of God, this film will save one child. Mm. Before the film was finished, by the grace of God, more than 200 children were rescued. Blessed be God. Blessed be God, man. Wow. So, what about Disney? What's the story with oh, well, Disney? That was that. <laughs> well, uh, after we finished the film, sorry, before we started filming the movie, we made a beautiful deal with uh, Fox Latin America. Beautiful. It was amazing. The contract, the deal was unbelievable. It was, they were going to be in charge of the distribution of Sound of Freedom. They were going to produce with us a documentary. Uh, it was going to be a TV series. And it was like 360. It was just so many things. It was like beautiful tools to end child trafficking, to raise awareness, not just the movie, but the collection of many other things, right? So uh, then uh, they invested in the movie, of course. So everything was so good to be true. And, and the plans that they had was unbelievable. I mean, I was so, so happy with the whole thing. But then Disney bought Fox later. And that property, the entire contract now is in the hands of Disney. And my friends at Fox Latin America, uh, they left. So I didn't know anybody at Disney. And now I'm here with people that I don't know. And now they own the movie. So they, I fly to Argentina and, and then I show them the movie in Argentina because the headquarters for Disney Latin America were in Argentina. Uh, great people, by the way, the guys who were working for Disney in Argentina, they were unbelievable. They saw the movie, but then other people saw it in Mexico. And I don't know if he, in LA they saw it as well. But make a long story, make a long story short, uh, weeks later, uh, I got an email from them and, and a phone call like saying that this movie is not for them. This movie is mm -hmm. not for us. I said, okay, hey, fine, you know, I, I just, I'll, I'll take it. I'm going to find distribution. Yes, but you, you have a debt with us. Well, yes, but uh, you have to understand that in the contract, you guys promised that, I mean, not you, but Fox, but now you own that contract, a TV series, a documentary, and then you have to pay me some something after the film is finished and you haven't paid me that. So let's, let's negotiate. It took me one year and then COVID hit this pandemia, pandemic, mm. pandemic. Uh, uh, so finally, after one year of negotiate, ne negotiating with them, uh, I took the uh, rights um, back. And then I started knocking doors, Netflix, Amazon, and many others. And same answer. This is not for us. Nobody will go and see a movie like this, Eduardo. I mean, who wants to see a movie like this? And I, you know, this is a lot of people, they think this is not real. So this is not for us. This is not for us. This is not for us. And then you have two options. Either you give up, you call your investors, you call everyone involved. Hey, I did, I did everything that I could. Let's put this uh, where on YouTube for free. Well, no, because they, we may, we may get canceled there too. Okay. Well, maybe uh, on Facebook, I think maybe that they will cancel it too. So what, what would I do, man? I, I was really frustrated. You know, maybe that was the time when I was talking to you next to the pool and then uh, nothing was happening and, and, or second option, you don't give up. You fight because it's about saving lives and, and, and you fight until the end. 
right? I choose the second one and I keep knocking doors. But at the same time, instead of waiting, just knocking doors and waiting, I started this tour in Mexico where I invited governors from Mexico, from different political parties, because this is not about politics. I don't care if you're left, right, up and down. It's about children. And I always use this analogy of this little house full of children and the house is on fire, right? And then this fire truck comes from this direction. This other fire truck come from, comes from this other direction. And when they get there, they start, they, they start arguing. Hey, this is my territory. No, no, this is my territory. No, this is my zip code. No, I think you want the commission. But what commission? You're a thief. No, you're a thief. Blah, 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 blah. And when they finished, the kids, the children are dead. Yeah. What they should have done when they got there, bring their water host, bring the fire down, both of them, finish with the fire and save the children. And then continue with the arguments, continue with the debate. But they, they already achieved the most important thing, the most important thing, which, which is to save the children. So there's millions of children on fire right now in the world. I want to invite everyone to bring their water host, bring the fire down, save the children. What if this is your son? What if this is my son? Nobody has exclusivity to save children. Like for example, I'm, I'm Catholic, right? So if my son is missing and an atheist come, hey, I know where to find my son. No. You don't believe in what I believe. So you have no right to find my son. Of course, find, you know what it is? Find my son and I will hug that guy forever and I will be grateful forever with this guy that God used to find my son. Well, that's the mentality. That's the mentality. If we don't come together in this, in what else we can be united? You know, I think, you know, there is more, uh, uh, how do you say this in English? Uh, coincidences, coincidence. Then, and I think there is more, things that we agree than in the things that we disagree. But sometimes we focus on the things that we disagree. And that's why it's World War II, World War III, World War IV, I and mean, everything that is coming is just crazy. You know, we, we don't focus on the things that unite us. And, and, and in this problem, even those who are involved in this crime publicly are against. It's so evil that no one is in favor. They're trying to legalize pedophilia. Disney has an agenda. Disney has an agenda. Disney wants to corrupt your children. Sound of Freedom wants to save your children. So anyway, um, I, started, I started doing this tour in Mexico where every governor of each state invited every leader from that state. We showed them the movie, and then at the end, we signed an agreement where we commit to end child trafficking in that state. So I was doing that, and then I was praying for an angel to come and rescue this movie. <laughs> and Angel Studios, in the middle of nowhere, in Utah, in a, in a little town called Provo, Angel Studios appear and they told me, I think we are your only option, Eduardo. And I was thinking like, no, I want a big studio. You know, this movie, they need, it needs to be seen by millions. God, please send me a big studio. Angel Studios in Provo, in Utah. Maybe at that time, the smallest distribution company in America for films. I met with them. I saw their faith, their passion. Jeffrey, Jordan, Neil, these three brothers who are on fire, on fire. And I was convinced just by meeting them. I hugged them. Five days later, I signed the contract. And they were like angels, three angels that God sent to rescue this movie. And then they asked me, what day you want to, uh, you know, what day you want to release the film? I said, well, maybe, you know what? This is March, right? This is just four months ago. Maybe September 15, because it's Independence Day in Mexico. So we celebrate freedom. Well, let's celebrate freedom with Sound of Freedom. Great idea. But then the next day, the guy couldn't sleep all night thinking about the freedom, Independence Day. He calls me the next day, Eduardo. I heard July 4th, July 4th. But July 4th is tomorrow. No, 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 no. July 4th is too dangerous for us. The biggest films of the year, Indiana Jones, Disney, biggest company in the world, then Mission Impossible, and then uh, Spider-Man is just finishing. No way. I mean, this, we're going to be killed. Are you kidding me? Eduardo, if the United States is the number one consumer of child sex in the world, we need to shake the conscience of this country on that day. Because, yes, let's celebrate freedom. Yes, with one hand. But with the other one, let's do something to bring freedom back to those children that are not free today. 
July 4th, Sound of Freedom. That's the day uh, oh. I was convinced. And then later on, I find out that Tim Ballard rescued Rocio, you know, the little girl who has been rescued in the movie. Mm -hmm. I mean, she has a different name for, so for protection. We don't share her real name. But that little girl was rescued on July 4th. Oh. Wow. I mean, what, what are the... This is God's I mean, this is a, this is just a, I, 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 that's why we don't take credit of anything, brother. I mean, yes, yeah. we're working really hard, but this is all glory to God. He's he's doing amazing. He's amazing. He's amazing. He's amazing. I've been crying every day. I feel like I'm living. I'm, I'm in a dream. You know, I don't want to wake up because then I'm going to be very angry. You know, <laughs> but if it's a dream, it's a very long dream. And but I think it's reality, and it's all because of God. And and and. Uh, Brother, I'm just so grateful. Like if I, one word that describes how we all feel is gratitude, gratitude, gratitude. God yeah. is amazing. God is amazing. And God is amazing. July 4th, we came out on July 4th. And, you know, in the beginning, they gave us like 100 theaters, 200 theaters. And then with the exhibitors, they saw the movie. They said, we're behind you guys. Next thing you know, we're in 2,000 theaters, 2,400 theaters, you know, the small ones, of course, you know. Indiana Jones, they have 2,000 more theaters than us, the big ones. Of, and and hundreds of millions of dollars. I remember I was I was driving on Sunset Boulevard in Los Angeles, California, and I saw one billboard of Indiana Jones, another one, and another one, and then one super big. Like I was like a little kid looking at it. Wow, that budget. It's the budget of our film. Yeah. And uh, and maybe the budget of our publicity, our PA. And these guys they have thousands of those, right? So impossible, humanly speaking, impossible to defeat Indiana Jones and Disney. And again, we were the number one movie in America that day. And I just can't believe this dream. And, and we had a goal of 2 million people showing up, representing the 2 million children that will be trafficked this year, right? That goal, Taylor, it was very, very, it's almost like, uh, I don't know, let's go and watch a movie in the moon tomorrow. Ah, right. Impossible. Well, that's, that is maybe easier to go to the moon and watch a movie that for us to, with, with the budget that we had, with the theaters that we had, Two million people in the first week, impossible. Three million people the first week show up. Amazing. That only God can pull that out, man. I mean, that's it. That's it. I, I give up. It's not us. We're broken. You know, I'm just uh, I'm just honored to be working in something bigger than myself. Um, and I'm just th very thankful to God that He can use broken instruments like us and and to save other other lives. And you know, by doing that, I'm saving my life too, brother. I thought the film was beautifully done. My hat's off to Alejandro Monteverde. He was he was down here. Uh, I had dinner with him a couple months ago with Leo because he came down and showed his new new film on Cabrini, mm -hmm. which is which is really good too. We hosted a, a shoot a filming of, or a viewing of it, and uh, I thought it was really interesting. I, I, I it was kind of more of an action film, and I, I was really pleased with the way that Alejandro did that. In particular, without giving anything away. Mm -hmm. When there's the fight scene with Jim Caviezel and the girls closing her eyes, the, the screen goes black, mm -hmm. but you can still hear the fighting and it comes back on. I thought that was really brilliant. That was really well done. I also liked your character. And I wanted to ask you, because you're not only the executive producer, you're in the film. You play a very pivotal yeah. role. Um, you're, I mean, I guess I'll let you describe who you are. And then my main question is, is that a real yeah. person in real life? Who you played? Yeah, well, I'm I'm the I'm, I'm not I'm not the executive producer. We have like 40 executive producers, and okay. I'm the producer of the film. And uh, but you know, um, every character in the movie is real. Okay. Now it was it was very difficult to tell a story the way how Alejandro told it to, told the story because when he interviewed Tim Ballard, and the first question we asked him, okay, well, first of all, we can't do your life. I mean, we need a TV series like thousand episodes. This is a movie, two hours. So what's the hardest rescue mission you've ever done in your life? And what's the most difficult one, but the most mm -hmm. successful one? And he said, well, the first one, Cartagena, Colombia, well, tell us. And in, in real life, it was three operations at the same time. He rescued more than 200, I mean, sorry, he rescued 120 children, right? 120 children in three operations, right? It was very difficult to tell a story with three, op with three operations. You need like maybe two, three movies, right? So what we did is we got elements from each story and we put the three stories in one story and that's that sound of freedom. And um, so my character was inspired by Paul Hutchinson, a, a guy that I met in Los Angeles, California. He's the one who actually introduced me to Tim Ballard. And we changed, 
uh, at that time, uh, we didn't want to, um, he was undercover and we changed his name. Now he's, you know, he came out now, so he's doing other things and he's working in another foundation. But at that time he said, uh, it's better for me to be, uh, you know, not to be called Paul Hutchinson. In the original script, it was Paul Hutchinson. So we changed it to Pablo Delgado, but it's inspiring a true, uh, the true character. This is the guy who, oh. you know, helped that this operation uh, came together. Amazing. And um, what did you have a role in that crafting of the narrative or was that all Alejandro? Alejandro and Rod Barr. OK, those are the two genius behind the script. Uh, it was very difficult uh, uh, to tell the story, um, Taylor, because it was almost three years of writing because uh, the number one rule was we are going to have children on set that are actors. So they cannot know what the movie is about. They're five-year-old kids. I mean, what, right. what are you going to tell them? Like, okay, well, right now this is what happened to you. No, I mean, how, yeah. if my son is, he's an actor and he's five years old, there's no way I'm going to allow him to be on, uh, you know, on a movie like this, unless no. I know the director and the producers and I'm going to be there and I read the script. So that, that's how we treat every kid. Like if it's my son, right? Or Alejandro's dad or, or son or Gene Caviezel or Tim Ballard. So we all agree in that rule. So this movie has to be, first of all, has to be like a, like a poetry, right? Una poesia, a poetry. And then um, I made a promise to my mother since 20 years ago that every movie that I made, I don't have to cover her eyes in any scene, mm -hmm. right? Sometimes you, you're watching your movie and your mother is there. Mom, don't, 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 don't watch this one. Don't watch this scene, right? I'm embarrassed. No, this movie has to, we need to have the integrity and treat every actor with dignity. They're not actors for me. They're my brothers. Dignity. They're human beings. They are called to be saints in every second. You cannot be called to be a saint, but then, uh, Lord, I'm sorry, in this scene, I have to sin, right? I have to be involved right. in, uh, in adultery because uh, that's my character. It's not me. It's just the character, right? No, 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 no. We're called to be saints every second, right? So I, I for us, was you, very I love important. that you say that. I love that you, it's so refreshing to hear an actor say that. Thank you. Well, because you know, a lot of people they think, "Well, it's, it's my character. It's, it's not. It's not me." You know, it's like when, when when you kill someone on 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 the story, you're not killing anybody. You're pretending, right? You're acting. But if you're Mary, and then you have to be Mary in the story, it's okay to kill. I mean, to uh, to kiss your wife. Well, but uh, well, it's not me. It's the character. No, I don't think that's right either. You know, I, if, if my wife is an actress, I will be, uh, it has nothing to do with me being insecure or anything. It's just, the, it's a, it's a principle. You know, I don't want my wife to be on, you know, pretending that she's the wife of someone else just because the story is important to tell and they're kissing and take one, take two, take three. And half of the day they're just kissing in Hawaii and everything's beautiful. And then she comes to my house, but it was not me. It was Raquel, the, uh, uh, you know, the right. character. No, 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 no. So mm -hmm. I think that's not okay. A lot of people think I'm crazy. Well, I'm crazy, but I, I, I will never uh, kiss anyone unless it's my wife. Yeah. Beautiful. Now, what's going to happen? I mean, this is a huge success. You know this. And you mentioned earlier how the original deal had documentary, miniseries. I mean, that has to just, that has to be on the table right now, right? Mm -hmm. Well, you know what? I, this is the thing, brother. I, I don't want to get distracted with mm -hmm. what can happen tomorrow because... I've been receiving all kinds of uh, offers right now and phone calls and hey, let's do this, let's do that. And right now I'm in a mission. And we, when you're in a mission, the number one rule is you have to focus. You have to stay focused. This is not finished yet. You know, the movie just came out here 10 days ago. The movie now is going to all Latin America and the rest of the world. And we need to have the time to do interviews to tell the people, hey, this is not over yet. This week is the most important week, our third week, because there's another movie coming out and, and Mission Impossible is still there. And they want all the theaters. And if we get distracted a little bit by, oh, now we're seeing this success and let's talk about the sequel, let's talk about the, uh, the TV series. No, 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 that's, that's the devil uh, tempting you. Right now, we're, we're still in the Super Bowl. And when you are in the final at the Super Bowl and you have like still like one hour away from the final, and just because you're winning, it doesn't mean that you're going to take a break to think about what are we going to do in the next game and the next season. No, 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 no. You need to win. Yeah. So right now, we, we, 
we need to end child trafficking. For example, look, look what just happened in Washington. We were invited to show the film in Washington to all the, by, by the Speaker of the House, to all the Congress and senators. You know how, I mean, you know why they invited us? Because the film is successful, because everyone is talking about the film. So right there, there is a momentum. We need to stay focused. If you touch Washington, you not only touch the US, you touch the world. The most important decision makers in the world are in Washington. And they're going to be watching this movie the 25th of July. Pray for that because this is so important. So important. These guys, I mean, this movie is forcing a conversation that for many years they didn't want to have. Nobody wants to have that conversation at that level, right? Because there's a lot of people involved in this crime. I mean, we are facing, we are fighting with, a, with an industry that produces more than $150 billion a year. That's, that's uh, how big it is. Who are, we, who are we fighting? So we need to stay focused. I'm not thinking about anything else but saving the children, ending child trafficking, ending child trafficking. The kids in Mexico are not for sale. The kids in the world are not for sale. And we need to, uh, again, bring the good people of Mexico, the good people of the United States, shake hands, work together. Remember what I said before, two Mexican filmmakers, Alejandro Monteverde and me. We moved here maybe, I don't know, uh, in 2000, almost 23 years ago. I didn't speak English. Alejandro didn't speak English. Later, we learned a little bit. I think my English is uh, a little bit better now. Sometimes I don't even understand myself, but I think it's getting better. Uh, his is better than I. Uh, then we meet and we made a promise 20 years ago. Let's make movies that matters. Movies that hopefully will change people's lives forever for good, right? 20 years later, to, to live this dream for us is the American dream and the Mexican dream. Two Mexican filmmakers meeting two American heroes, Gene Caviezel and Tim Ballard, working together, Sound of Freedom. This is a beautiful message of unity. And, and, and we're not just neighbors. Our nations, we are not just neighbors. We, Mexico and United States, we are brothers and sisters. When we need to find the right people, connecting, because only, only great things can happen, brother. The sky is the limit. Let's make America and Mexico free again. Let's make America and Mexico great again. Let's save America and Mexico together. And that's sound of freedom. That is sound of freedom. Because if the focus is not children, then who? If the government is not going to be, if the government doesn't protect the children, who, who are they protecting? They're the future. They're the future decision makers. What kind of decisions they're going to make if we don't protect them now? Us, adults, your children are my children and I will give my life for them. I will sacrifice for them. Every adult should be seeing every child as their own child. Yeah. I'm glad you said that because politically, you know, we've discussed the, the, the border debate. It's, it's about immigration. It's about drugs. Uh, it's about economics and workforce. And I, this film, I think, will shift the window of discourse that the border issue is could chiefly be about human trafficking. And it's, 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 I think for yes. Americans and maybe for people all across the world, they didn't even realize that that was a big business. And this film shows oh, that brother. it is, I, I don't remember the number you said earlier, but it's in the B's, the billions, correct? Yeah, more yeah. than $150 billion yeah. every year. And a lot of people, can you imagine, they, they, they don't know about this or yeah. they don't want to know. Now they are forced to talk about this because of the success of the film. The conversation is happening right now. And my goal is that this movie will keep succeeding because the more successful this movie becomes, brother, the media, mainstream media, they're forced to talk about it. Good or bad, it doesn't matter. They're forced to talk about the success of the film and the topic. So millions of people will hear that this is real and it's happening. It's happening here, right? So now they have no excuses to say, well, I didn't know. Oh, I didn't know. Now you know. Now you know, what are you going to do about it, right? So this is a great momentum. The movement is growing and we needed a movement because I told Tim Ballard when I met him, brother, I need to ask you a very, very important question because I'm confused. Okay, so you're saying that this is a global problem, right? It's a human problem. And you're saying that the United States is the number one consumer of child sex and child pornography and drugs. And Mexico is the number one provider of the three. Okay, so if you guys, you live in the most powerful country in the world, you have 
the money, the technology, intelligence, the army, the police, everything. How come we don't finish this problem? And he said, because it's not a priority, Eduardo. Mm. I'm not the solution mm. to solve this problem. I can be the solution for one child. Of course, you save one child, you save the world. Thank God I can be, we can be the solution for 1,000 kids, 3,000 kids. We're in the thousands, right? We're talking about millions of children kidnapped every year. This is beyond us. This is too big for us. So we're not the solution. And I'm confused. So, okay, so hold on a second. Okay, one, you know, one child at a time. Yes, one child, you save the world. But what's the solution to fix this problem? We need a movement. We need a movement. A global movement with global solutions for a global problem. And that can be sound of freedom. And I, you know what? Even though I dream with that, I never, never imagined, brother, that that can be a reality eight years later. The movement started. No one can stop it. More than 5 million people just saw the movie in these last 10 days. This is amazing. This is amazing. Every country we receive, as I said before, more than 700 emails from all over the planet. Countries asking Angel Studios, we want the film. We want the film. They're fighting for the film right now. So why? Because they know that they have the problem too in their country. So this is amazing. This has got using a little film with a big heart, small distribution company who is not a small anymore. Angel Studio now is a big distribution company. So this is amazing. It's going to change the lives of so many children. And I can picture those children praying to God every day. Please send someone to rescue us. Please rescue us. Please rescue us. And God heard those prayers. And he's sending an army to rescue them. The army of love. The army of brave hearts. And that's why I want to do this march in, in Washington and in, and in Mexico. All adults dressing white. The white represents the purity mm. and the innocence that these guys are uh, stealing from these kids, right? Because you that's what that's what it, that's what it is. They want to remove God from these children, of course, and they steal their innocence and their purity. And they'll destroy these kids forever, unless if they're not going to be rescued and receive the proper the properly healing and 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 bring God back to them, these kids are dead. So this march is going to represent the innocence and the purity. That's why we're all going to invite Everyone who sees Sound of Freedom and everyone who, who wants to join this army to dress in white, it's going to be one in Mexico. We're going to go all the way to Our Lady Guadalupe, and then we're going to pray a rosary for the children of Mexico, for the children of the world, and for our nation. It's going to be amazing, unbelievable. Our Lady Guadalupe is not, she's not happy with this, and she's coming after these guys. Our Lady Guadalupe is coming after these guys. Yes. And then in D.C., when is this going to happen? 25th, July 25th. That's why this is so important because oh, wow. this movie, can you imagine? Sound of Freedom is going to be next next week. I mean, Excellent. the next few days, uh, July 25th. It's going to, and uh, I want to be, uh, you know, I'm very grateful to the Speaker of the House. He saw the film, loved the movie, and he's the one who is inviting everyone. Wow. Let's pay attention to see who show up and who doesn't show up. Yeah. I'm just saying, you know, because uh, I think together we can end this. And then we're going to put pressure in the government of Mexico. I want to invite the president of Mexico to see the film. And, and hey, you know what? I, I know that we don't agree in many things, but in this one we agree, right? So why don't you put together the best, uh, in, you know, the, the smartest people in your, in your cabinet, see this film and see what, what can we do to end child trafficking in Mexico? I hope he will say yes. Uh, we'll see. You know, I'm going to send that invitation maybe in the next couple of weeks after uh, Washington. And uh, we are putting, we're, we're putting, we're working with my lawyers. We're putting something together, a bipartisan and bilateral effort to once and for all to end child trafficking between Mexico and United States. Yeah, has to happen. It has, has, to, to, happen. has to happen, brother. But you happen. know what? The most important thing we can do, pray, pray. Pray. Mm -hmm. And you know, Taylor, when COVID hit, we're talking about 2020, March 22nd, I started praying the Rosary Life on Facebook and on Instagram and, and then eventually in all my social media. More than 100 million Rosaries um, in the last three years. God bless People you. praying for Beautiful. many intentions, but in, every, but in every Rosary, I always say, for Sound of Freedom, for everyone mm -hmm. who was involved in Sound of Freedom, for the children. God's children are not for sale every day, brother, with thousands of people, thousand people. I mean, hundreds of thousands of people every day. I'm still, I'm, I'm going to do it later tonight. I'm, I'm, I'm doing it every day. 
And I started this because uh, it's the Feast of Our Lady, um, Nuestra Señora del Carmen. Uh, how do you say in English? Our Lady of... Carmel, Mount Carmel. Carmel. Mount Carmel today. And um, Nuestra Señora del Carmen. And month from now is going to be the Assumption, right? La Virgen de la Asunción. Yes. So in this month, I'm inviting everyone to go to Mass every day and to pray the Rosary every day this month for the children that are missing, the children that are being hurt by the adults. Yes. And uh, so please join me in that in that uh, challenge, brother. It's going to be one month of just daily daily rosary with daily mass for the children. And uh, but those rosaries for the last, I mean, since 2020 till today, every day praying for Santo Freedom. I, I, you know what? I give all the credit to all these people that are praying, that have been praying for this movie because it's not normal that we don't have billboards and posters and our budget for PNA marketing and publicity. I mean, it's just very little. And look what is happening. It's, it's just amazing, yeah. man. It's beautiful. I mean, the, the film is political, of course. It's art. But I think mm -hmm. one thing that I haven't heard anyone say is it's theological and not in like a preachy, cheesy way, mm -hmm. but there is a theological thread that goes through the entire film. And, you know, there's one point where Tim Ballard, with Jim Caviezel playing, he said, he as he's, as he's tripping up that one pedophile, he quotes the verse, it would be better for a millstone to be mm -hmm. cast and tied around his neck and cast in the sea than to hurt one of these little ones. And then God's children is not for sale. And there's this, there's these very subtle mm -hmm. reminders and cues that, that this is not something that mm -hmm. we can do by our own strength, by our own power. This is something that is divine. This is something led by the Holy Spirit. And I, I thought the film presented that in, in a subtle and artistic way that didn't sort of, you know, sound preachy, mm -hmm. but it did, it did remind those who have ears to listen that, that this is a God centered endeavor. Oh, totally. We had mass on set every day, yeah. pray a rosary tell. every day. And, uh, and we're, we're up, you know, we offer this movie to God and from day one, and it was just, uh, uh it's not a political movie because this is beyond politics. This is, the, I mean, children, 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 they, they don't belong to any party. You know, yeah. I mean, we're talking about three year old kids. They don't even know how to speak yet. I mean, there's just, they, it's just so sad, man, what is happening. Um, but you know what? It gives me hope when I meet people like Tim Ballard, mm -hmm. um, people like you that, yes, we know, we know where the problem is, but we're doing something. And again, the power of prayer so is the power of prayer is so important for me to share this. There is a lot of people that they call me. My mother called me the other day. Hey, you know this 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 lady. She lives in a very um, you know poor village. There's no theaters around there, and she went to visit her son, and she heard your interview in Spanish, and she she wants to help, but she doesn't know how. She doesn't know how because she doesn't have money to go. First of all, to go and buy a tickets and bring her family to see the theater. Uh, but forget about that because we can help her, right? No, she, there's no theaters where she lives, right? So what can she do? My mother asked me. So next time I see her, I can tell her that I, that I asked you that question because she told me, as your son, what can I do? He said, mom, tell her to pray the rosary every day for the movie, for the children, that this movie will touch millions of hearts. And that, that is the most powerful thing a human person can do. So, and that's why I think this movie right now is so... Uh, esta cargada de oración, like it, it's, it's, I don't know how to say that in English, brother, but it's like, uh, it, it, it's, it's just, it's full of prayer. It's like pack. Yeah. Pack. Like it, it's almost like a, it's bulletproof by so many prayers, you know? Yeah. And, and, and that's why I think we're breaking every, every rule. July 4th, we broke the rule for a movie mm -hmm. like us, right? No budget for marketing. We broke the rule. Very little budget compared to these big guys, right? They have more theaters than us. That's not fair, but that's what it is. Okay, well, we're, we're right there. Um, a movie about child trafficking. Who wants to see a movie about child trafficking? Well, we'll break the rule. That's, that's right. what the experts tell us. Nobody's right. going to see a movie about child trafficking, right? So we're breaking all these rules. And, and, and that's when you break all these rules and then you succeed, then you know that it is God having fun. And he gets the glory. All the glory. Yeah, beautiful. Not just half, not just little. All glory to God. Yeah. Well, I want to challenge 
everyone watching this. I want you, first of all, to share and like this video, let people see it so they can hear the backstory of, of how this amazing film, but go see it. Go see it. This, this podcast got over 5 million views last in the last 30 days. So if all of you would just go buy a ticket, bring a friend. Mm -hmm. Now, I wouldn't recommend bringing young children to it. I think the film did a great mm -hmm. job of preserving the innocence of the audience. As you said, Eduardo, they didn't show anything that was mm -hmm. graphic or that made you want to throw up. But I think it would, you know, if I brought my 12 year old daughter, she would, it'd be, I, she couldn't see it. Right. It's tough. So yeah. I think, you know, my 17 year old son saw it. He thought it was amazing. Yeah. I, th I think take your spouse, take your friends, 5 million of you, 10 million of you need yeah. to go and still see this film. It's amazing. Right. I'm helping out with angel studios. You can go to angel.com forward slash my name, Taylor. It's on the screen, angel.com Taylor. You mm -hmm. can buy tickets. You can pay it forward and buy tickets for other people. It'll find the theater closest to you. It's a, I, I use it to buy my own ticket. It's super easy to do. And I think that really helps uh, Angel in, in their distribution and promotion of this film. So I want to encourage everyone who watches my podcast, Dr. Taylor Marshall podcast, go see the film. Go see it. Support it. Pay it forward. Men like Eduardo, Jim Caviezel, Alejandro, they have done amazing work. And this, this thing is just, it's beautiful. It's artistic. It's theological. It's edifying. And it will move you to take action. There's, and by the way, there's a great <laughs> message at the end, Eduardo, by Jim. You got to stay through the yeah. credits. I know yes, a lot of people leave. I didn't see yeah, that. It, but you got to stay and listen to yeah, Jim you gotta stay. He has a powerful you gotta stay because message. It's like you wait in this, for the theater for the credits to run. It's like a minute and a half or two. And then Jim comes on and he gives you your marching orders. And it's very powerful. So if you do see it, mm -hmm. or maybe you need to go see it again, just so you can see Jim Caviezel at the end, stay through to the end and um, definitely be, be, be part of not just the movie, but the movement. What do you want to add to that, mm -hmm. Eduardo? Well, hermano, that, you know, for those who have seen it, thank you so much. God bless you. Go and see it again, please. <laughs> because this week... Is the yeah. most important week this is our third week so this is our either we stay for like many more weeks or it was great to have you here guys two weeks of success but there is more movies coming out and yeah. uh goodbye or we stay for longer this week if we do the impossible which is to pack the theaters whatever theaters we have right now I think we have 3,000 theaters. We'll pack those theaters wow. for one more, one more week. It's just, a, it's, the last, it's the last thing, I, you know, we already did the, the, the hardest part. The movie, the distribution, and the movies in your theater. All you need to do is just, just go and buy one more ticket. And if you cannot afford a ticket, there is tickets out there available for you if you go to angel, angel.com. And, and, yeah. and, and there is tickets right there that you can buy for you, as Taylor said, for your family, or you can pay it forward. And, and so someone else can see it for free, thanks to your generosity. If you are the ones who you cannot afford, you can get a ticket for free as well. But you have to go and see this movie. This week is, please, this week. This is the week. If we survive, if we pack the theaters this week, mission accomplished, this movement is global. One more week, global. Please, please, please do it for the children. And uh, what else, man? And the last thing I want to say, um, the movie begins when the movie finished mm -hmm. when the movie finished your mm -hmm. movie begins when the movie finished ask yourself what can i do and god will answer you if you really want to do something to end child trafficking go and see the movie and then ask god what can i do can you help me and he will tell you what to do and the last thing taylor thank you so much for your leadership brother uh you're leading by example you and your family, I am honored to consider you my brother. And I am very thankful to God to know you because you've been amazing. Your books are unbelievable. You're changing the lives of so many people. And at the end of the day, that's the most important thing because a lot of people are saying, yeah, but what, what are we going to do with the, uh, the border? You know, let's, let's, let's secure uh, the borders because there's human traffic in there. Yes, yes. You can, you know what? You can build walls here. You can build walls there. If you don't fix your heart, there's nothing we can do. In one hand, yes, law and order. In one hand, 
But on the other hand, your heart needs to be fixed. And the only one can fix your heart is Jesus Christ. So if your heart, if the center of your heart, of your soul, and the center of your house, of your decisions, every decision, not just some decision, every decision is not going to be Jesus Christ, there's no way, there's no way you're going to survive. And it's just sooner, you know, it's just a matter of time that you're going to be doing the wrong thing. So, uh, because remember, those guys who are doing this evil mm -hmm. to the children, they're not from Mars or from other planet. They're human beings created in the image of likeness of God. There are brothers and sisters. In some point, there were children too. So mm -hmm. then what happened to them? How come they, when they grew up, they start making something happen? They start making the wrong decisions? And, and what happened? They removed God from their lives. Yeah. And when you remove God from your life, brother, we're dead. We're dead. I, I don't care. You know, it doesn't matter who you are. If you remove God from your life, you stop, you stop praying. Then the other one comes and governs your life. And you know who's the other one. So yeah. we need to pray for the conversion of the, of the world. We need to pray for the conversion of all these criminals so they can repent. And if they repent, hey, amazing. Amazing, right? Because Jesus came here to heal the sick, the sinners. We're all sinners. But the secret of success is to have God in the center of your life. The secret of failure is to remove God from your life. Mother Teresa said, we are not called to be successful. We are called to be faithful to God. We're yes. called to be saints. Now, if by being faithful to God, success comes, is a blessing. Let's use that success to change the world. But never compromise your values, your faith in order to, in order to obtain what the world thinks success is because that success doesn't come from God. We're called to be saints. How are we going to achieve that? Broken instruments. Impossible, right? Well, it's possible for God. It's impossible for us. If you live a sacramental life, you pray the rosary every day, take communion every day if you can. There's nothing better that you can give to your soul than daily communion, right? Go to confession, frequent confession, read the Bible every day, the Word of God. I mean, ask the Holy Spirit for humility before you open it so God can speak to you. Fast, pray and fast, nothing more powerful than that. Nothing is more powerful than fasting and praying together. And serve your neighbor, serve others. And all this for the glory of God. Amen. Amen. Well, I'm going to close this in a prayer, and then let's pr we'll do an Ave Maria together in Latin. That sound good? Mm -hmm. All right. Yes, brother. I love it. The Son and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Almighty and gracious Amen. God, we, we thank you for this film. We ask your hand of blessing upon it, your anointing. We ask that you would please use it to rescue your children and to preserve the innocence of millions of children that are at risk. We thank you for the success so far, and we ask that the faithfulness would continue to be magnified and that people would begin to fight for these children to rescue them and to prevent it. And we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. And now we ask Our Lady to Amen. pray for us. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Ave Maria, Domino gratia tecum, plena, Dominus Benedicta tu in mulieribus, benedicta tu in mulieribus et, fructus et benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. Santa, Santa Maria, Maria, Mater Dei, Mater Dei ora pro nobis peccatoribus, peccatoribus nunc et in hora mortis, mortis nostre. Amen. Amen. Sancte Iose, Our Lady of Guadalupe, ora pro nobis, pray for us. Ora pro nobis. Nomine Patris et Fidi et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Amen. Eduardo Verastegui, hermano, thank you so much for your time. I know you're very busy. I thank you for just taking time to come and talk to us and, and share with us. Thank you for all this great work. Thank you for this film. Everyone, please go see Sound of Freedom. Go to angel.com forward slash Taylor. Get tickets. Pay it forward. Let's get another 5 million people in the seats, and let's see this through for the children. Thank you, Eduardo. God bless you. Hermano, later, maybe at uh, 1 o'clock in the morning, uh, after a meeting that I have, I'm going to be praying my rosary on Facebook and on Instagram, Eduardo Verastegui. Uh, if you are late, uh, you want to pray with me, uh, I'll see you later. Que viva la libertad. Ave Maria. Thank you, Eduardo. God bless. Godspeed. Everybody remember, God bless you, Jesus brother. Christ says you're the light of the world and the salt of the earth. So go out there and be salty. Good night, everyone. God bless.